Welcome to the Glow Up Season podcast. I'm Asia, but people know me best as Isla Honey, the self-love coach and women empowerment blogger. My mission is to help women glow up in every aspect of their lives, their careers, finances, physical and mental health, their relationship with others, and especially the one with themselves. In fact, this passion of mine landed me the 2019 Woman of the Year Award by Women on the Rise. That's how committed I am to providing resources, support, and guidance to my fellow sisters. In this podcast, you'll find stories of my own and stories of other incredible women, along with tangible tools to help you elevate to the best version of yourself. To glow up means to completely transform to the point where you're almost unrecognizable. Just like that scene in Cinderella before she goes to the ball, that's the kind of transformation we're going to get you to. Get ready, sis, because it's your glow up season. It's that glow up. This that season, I'm going to have to show ya. Make over my life so I can know you. Won't you get to know me? Your life is a trophy. Woman follow so we keep on growing like Hi everyone, welcome to my podcast. I'm not gonna lie, it's still so surreal that I even have a podcast. So thank you so much for giving it a listen and for being here today. I'm so grateful. So today's episode is very special. I'm gonna introduce my guest in a little but wanted to break down what it's gonna be about. So I wanted to ask you guys, do you sometimes feel like life is happening to you rather than for you? Like the odds are stacked against you or you've been on a never-ending losing streak or that. Do you have thoughts that sound like, oh, why me? What did I do to deserve this life? Or what did I do to have all these unfortunate circumstances happen to me? Like they keep happening. Why me? And I'm going to be honest here. Like I plan on being honest for the rest of my podcast. And if you follow me on social media, I'm very transparent when it comes to my life and my struggles. And so I used to be in that same exact spot, you guys. I felt so unlucky in life. Unlucky is the word. I really felt like the cards I was dealt with in life were crappy cards. I had had a crappy hand of cards, you guys. I came from a lot of childhood trauma toxic relationships and I would always have the desire to set goals but I would always give up and so when I say that I was in the same exact spot you guys I was like please believe me I was frustrated I was angry I was straight up angry and not to mention hopeless and now I'm on the other side of that I'm resilient. I am thriving. I'm not, I will flex because I really am. And I'm just so proud of, you know, my journey and how far I've come. And, you know, I wanted to make this episode on this topic because there's absolutely no difference between you and me, sis. I was in the same exact spot just a year ago. So it is possible. And I brought another incredible woman to this episode to share her stories and her tips so that you can thrive too, sis. I'm trying to see us all win. So without further ado, I want to introduce my amazing guest, Tiffany Chung. Tiffany is a single mom who got laid off due to COVID in April, which was only eight months ago. And she's now an entrepreneur who officially hit six figures in her business last week after only launching eight months ago, y'all. She's a full-time student at St. Mary's, so she's running a six-figure business, momming, and a student. She's also a published author and her business is in um, social media business coaching. And I actually know her because she was my coach and now she's in my self-love program. So now I'm her coach, uh, two totally different areas in coaching. So today she's sharing her story of becoming a mom at 19, getting laid off due to COVID and then pivoting and starting her own business and killing the game, y'all. 
She was featured on BuzzFeed and even Yahoo Finance under the top 10 social media coaches of 2020. And she just launched. This is, I'm sorry, I'm going to say that so many times because like what she's doing now is just so insane. Like as a uh, fellow business owner, it's just like blows my mind. She went from food stamps, you guys, to now hitting 30K months. The other week, she even made 30K in one week. She's not going to flex, so I'm going to flex for her. She's like being super shy here in the studio. Um, This episode is about how she broke out of her victim mentality, took full responsibility for her actions, and took control of her life. In this episode, we'll talk about her story and mine as well, and then tangible tools on how to not take no for an answer, how to reframe your misfortunes, and how to accept failure as only feedback. And most of all, how to rewrite your story to a story of your wildest dreams. So welcome, the one and only Tiffany Chung. Hi, I'm so excited to be here. So I'm going to go over the 11 signs of victim mentality because I know that when I was using it, I didn't know the signs and I actually didn't even know the term victim mentality. So we're going to go over the signs and Tiffany, if you resonate with any of these, feel free to chime in. Mm -hmm. So these are the 11 signs of the victim mentality. Number one, you're constantly blaming other people or situations for feeling miserable. Number two, you possess a life is against me philosophy. So for me, this was huge because I just always asked, like, why me? Especially with God, too. I was just like, why is he picking on me? Like, why does he choose me to pick on out of everyone? Like, I'm such a great person. I have a big heart. Like, why me? Did you ever resonate with that? Oh, that was definitely my old self. I used to constantly say things like, of course that would happen to me or adjust my luck. And it was just, even though it was out of sarcasm, I was manifesting more of that and that mentality really for a long time. Whoa, you said manifesting that reality. That's powerful. (laughs) So we're going to probably get into that later on. Um, Number three, you think others are purposely trying to hurt you. Um, Number four, You're cynical or pessimistic. So pessimistic was probably my middle name until just last year when I started this like growth journey. I always looked at couples and rolled my eyes. Like, I kid you not, and I know this sounds really rude, but I just would make, I would roll my eyes and I would also make comments like under my breath, like, oh, he's probably cheating on her. Like, they're probably not happy. Just like, talking just being so pessimistic and I just with anything not even just couples with like women who were confident like oh she probably has other insecurities or she's probably wearing a mask and just like really just negative number five you feel powerless to change your circumstances so one of my favorite quotes is really really powerful accountability feels like an attack when you're not ready to acknowledge how your behavior harms others it feels like an attack I honestly felt like everyone was attacking me I was not down to acknowledge any of my faults or take any responsibility so that one's a huge one number six you enjoy sharing your tragic stories with other people number seven you have a habit of blaming attacking and accusing those uh, you love for how you feel number eight You're constantly putting yourself down. Number nine, you believe that you're the only one being targeted for mistreatment. Number 10, you refuse to analyze your beliefs or improve your life. For me, I just didn't think that there was a way out. So I was like, okay, this is my life. I'm just going to deal with it. I'm not going to do anything like this. These are the cards that I have been dealt. So, and they were crappy cards. I was like, okay, well, this is what I was given this is my story. Okay, number 11, even when things go right, you find something to complain about. Okay, so let's dive in. So how did you play victim of your life? Yeah, so this is a this is an important question that really made me think. And I think for 
a while when I w- when I became pregnant, I got pregnant when I was 18, had my daughter at 19. So a year after I actually right after my first year in college. So you can only imagine like being an early in your early 20s and all of your friends are discovering themselves and having fun and partying and Over here, I was taking care of a newborn. I was working and going to school because I had extended that time that I was in college to have my daughter. And so I felt like for a while, I and because I was in a toxic relationship, an abusive relationship, I did really go back to um, number two that you mentioned, that whole life is against me. Why was I dealt these cards? Why am I going through this? And I even remember when I told my mom, um, that my daughter's dad and I were separating, uh, she was she responded with, so you're going to be a single mom? As if like society would rather us women stay in toxic relationships rather than be strong and step away and actually have the intelligence to do so when something doesn't serve you. So for me, I played victim by holding myself back and staying tethered to my title sometimes rather than taking complete responsibility for my life and just admitting that I was meant for so much greater. But at the time, that wasn't something that I recognized. And so it didn't have anything to do with necessarily being a mom sometimes. It was just poor time management or lack of intent and purpose. But from there, you know, I was able to start and I'll transition into sharing more about that and how I did that. But I transitioned it into how can I be a great role model for her and how can I provide for her and set a good example as she looks up to me and creating a business that I love for myself. So I didn't let the title take over me. I chose to reframe it because there's still that stigma around single mothers. And I did not want the title of a single mom to hold me back from what I was capable of doing, but rather letting it light a fire underneath me that would allow me to be empowered like never before in order to provide for my daughter and create the life I wanted to live. All of this was so – I was just like, you You guys can't see my face, but I was just like, I'm in awe of just what you said because there's so much – when you said like purpose, I feel like when I was in a victim mentality, I don't think I had a purpose. I didn't really know what I was – put on this earth for and Mm -hmm. I'm not saying that you need to know what you were put on this earth for to break out of the victim mentality but I feel like when you have a purpose and when you have like a why in life then you can really be pushing forward towards that and I had a why back then but I I didn't identify it and I didn't write it down and I didn't really focus my attention on my why And also nobody ever asked me what my why was. And so that's something that's really big too that we'll probably get into later on in this episode is like what your why is for life. What is your core motivation for like everything? I just want to chime in and um, since she shared how she played victim in her life, I want to share with you guys since I'm going to be super vulnerable in this podcast, honestly. So I used to play victim with my ex and um, I won't use any names in any of these podcast episodes. So I had trust issues which stemmed from childhood trauma and I, I had a hard time trusting men. So for me, when I got into this long four year relationship, I told him that every single person that I dated before him cheated on me. And so I told him like, I kind of gave him like a warning like, hey, I come with a lot of baggage, so this, this, and that. And at the time, I just kind of wanted to open up to him about my story. But later on, when my trust issues were really bad, just like I'll probably make another episode of just like how bad my trust issues were, I used that as an excuse. I used my story as an excuse to not change the way that I was acting towards him and in my relationship. So like... Anytime he would kindly bring up, hey, um, I think that, you know, this book would help with trust issues or I think that, you know, like maybe you should talk to someone about like these things. I would just be like, no, you knew what 
you, what you got yourself into. Like I told you in the beginning that I had trust issues. So you have to deal with it because, and so do you guys see how like, how I transferred the responsibility to him? Like instead of myself, like, no, I don't have to change. You chose to date someone with baggage. So that's your responsibility. Like don't put the blame on me. And I used that card for like, maybe two years, honestly, before um, I went to therapy. And so I just wanted to chime in and give you guys an example of how I played victim and how I used, yeah, my story just to get away with like a lot of things. And also too, I used to be, this is probably hard to believe for a lot of people and especially you, Tiffany. I used to be (laughs) so rude to people. I used to be so mean because in my head, no one knew what I, the trauma I had been through. And so I used that as an excuse to be rude. I just used to roll my eyes. I just used to like, just be a mean person. And because life, because I felt like life was picking on me. So I felt like I had the right to treat people like crap. Yeah. And that's really hard to imagine now knowing you and how much you've evolved. But I think it also just goes to show that nothing others do is because of you. Mm. A lot of what triggers us is a mirror to us and what we need to continue working on. But like you mentioned before, when it comes to accountability, it can feel like an attack if you're not ready to receive it. So learning to be aware and learning to be aware of where your triggers are and where that comes into play is going to be really important to really shine a light on what you need to work on and just learning more about yourself as a whole. Yeah. And I love how you pointed that out because anytime someone is like mean to me or rude to me or says something really mean because obviously you know that the internet can just be ruthless with their comments and everything. But because I was in a place where when I was hurting and when I was at a really low point in my life and I was doing the same thing, I know that anything that someone throws at me is just a reflection of them. So I just love how you pointed that out because I didn't get that concept back then. And so I just felt like I just felt like I deserved it in a way because they must be doing this to me because I deserve it. Right. And just breaking from that is just very healing. Um, Just not to take things personal. Absolutely. Um, At what point, it's just like, at what point in your life did you decide that you were done playing victim? Like, this is enough. Like, I want to rewrite my story. So I feel like things started to shift They started a couple of years ago when I really wanted to set the right example for my daughter. And when you have a little one that looks like you and that acts like you running around in the house, nothing brings to attention your characteristics and your habits and sabotage and your own childhood trauma like having a child. And so that's when I really started searching and yearning for more in my life. But this year, starting my own business was completely completely pivotal for me. I had to deconstruct everything I knew about money, success, and myself, and taking full responsibility, not just in my business, but in my life. I started realizing and accepting that things were not happening for me, uh, not happening to me, but happening for me. I used to be the person that would be really reactive about every single situation that would happen. And it would be all the anxiety, racing thoughts, just the dramatics. But once I realized that I could take control of my thoughts and my thoughts create my reality, I started taking control of my emotions, what I was thinking thinking, what I was consuming, and then what would lead to my actions and taking 100% responsibility for my actions 100% of the time. And that really helped me shift out of, oh no, why is this happening to me? What did I do to deserve this? Into, okay, What is this teaching me? There's no such thing as failure. There's just feedback and I can realign and I can readjust and 
at the end of the day, when we look back on situations that have caused us maybe pain or heartbreak, it leads us and opens us into and opens more doors for us, as well as allowing us to learn specific lessons. So if I hadn't learned specific lessons in my past and allowed it to teach me something, it wouldn't have led me into my next spot in life and my next opportunity and my next teaching and my my next space or my next environment. And that is what really progressed me along my journey of where I am today. And so reframing that and looking at that perspective in a different light can be so, so beneficial to transition from scarcity to abundance. I love that. And just like, we'll probably, I'll probably get you back on another podcast about uh, switching from scarcity to like an abundant mindset because that's just really has really changed my life switching that and it, it's I love that you uh you said like oh what's next because when when a mishap and I know that this may come off that it may be not believable just from someone who is trying to change out of a victim mentality like I get excited when I mess up like I Me get too, no. when a mishap happens, like when something unfortunate happens, I'm like, OK, what's next? Like you said, mm -hmm. because I know that I'm going to learn or I learn every time I make a mistake, I'm going to be closer to you're going to run into things in life that you've never done before. Yeah. Every single week or every day. Right. And, and it so allows us to be grateful for what we didn't initially like what we didn't initially get that we may have wanted because mm -hmm. the universe, God is like, hold on, you're going to get something so much better or hold on, it's not the time yet. So just because we want something, we desire it and it doesn't happen right away doesn't mean that we're missing out on something. It means that it might be coming later or it's prepping us for something greater. Yeah, I actually did um, an Instagram uh, video. I don't know if you watched that. It's on, it was a short video on why we get told no. Mm -hmm. So like, oh, wait, there's, okay, there's three reasons why you can get no. One is not right now. Two, you're asking the wrong person or the person doesn't have the capacity to give it to you. So for example, if you ask someone for a raise and your company, it's like out of budget, they don't have the capacity to give it to you, right? And then the other one is something better is in store for you later on. And I get, a, this is actually a really common misconception. A lot of people think I get yeses all the time. I get noes. I get more noes I think I get like 97% no's and like 3% yeses. It's just pushing past and keeping on when I get a no. Exactly. Um, I'm sure you know that you know. <laughs> um, I'm sure you get a lot of no's as well, right? Yeah. I think that people can see on social media a lot of the achievements and the milestones and all of the big wins and celebrations. But a lot of people don't share what goes on behind the scenes and all of the falling flat on your face and the people turning them away and the try and try again that goes on that people just don't see or sometimes don't share. So Asia, I feel like both of us are really vulnerable and transparent when it comes to our journeys because we don't want women feeling alone or that they're going about it the wrong way. It's just a matter of of timing and being prepared for the blessing that is about to come your way. And think about if everything went our way, we would never be able to learn. My first year in business, although I feel like it was a really great one, there was a lot of pivoting that happened behind the scenes. There was a lot of figuring it out on my own and not knowing what I was doing and overworking until I got vertigo and just a lot of feeling alone. But that is something that people can look at, you know, me hitting six figures in eight months and go, wow, it must have been so easy for her. But they don't know what kind of work and effort and sacrifice. Sacrifice is a big one that goes on behind the scenes. And failing. Exactly. Failing. There's so much. People can look at your story and be like, wow, 
She hit six figures in eight months of launching, which still blows my mind. Um, they probably just figure, they probably think that you just, you just hit, you just made the right decisions all the way up until six figures. And that is not no. the case. Actually making the wrong decisions helped me get closer to my goals because then I was able to go, oh, wow, I didn't mean to do that. Or I didn't, that was not the right decision. Or this isn't working. And it, be able to realign and readjust my vision in order to get on the right track or or a track that aligns with me, right? Because sometimes it isn't a clear right and wrong. It's it's what does your business need? What do you need in order to be successful? And so you're absolutely right. There was a lot of no's, but with every single time that I fell flat on my face, I picked myself back up from the ground and I didn't take it as a final answer. And I said, all right, where are we adjusting from here? And I just kept going every single time. It's the resilience for me, sis. <laughs> and you know, like for anybody who's listening to this, because I used to be the type of person who when I got knocked down, I was like, okay, this is not for me, right? This is just, all right, I'm just going to stay here. I'm going to take a nap here. I'm going to set up shop down here. Right. I used to be so defeated and I used to stay down for long periods of time. And um, there's this example of like, you don't see a baby who's trying, who's crawling and who's trying to walk and fall and be like, okay, maybe this isn't for me. Like maybe walking isn't for me. Right. <laughs> right. And so we have to get back to that mentality because I mean, obviously when we were kids, we had, we didn't have societal pressures and like insecurities and all, you know, you were fearless as a kid. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I wish I can go back and be just be like, we just did not care. You know, we, there was just like, but yeah, like I said before, like society and everyone and like inner and outer critics. But um, I just wanted to bring that example up because I used to be that type of person to build grit, like to be resilient. I read this book. It's called Grit by Angela Duckworth. And it was one of the first self-help books I've ever read. And honestly, probably top 10 books I've ever read. And I read a lot of books. But in the book, it just talks about we think that there's such a disconnect between us and like the really successful people. Like my old self, I'm, I'm sure you can resonate you're the Tiffany, what it's so mind you, it's December. So the Tiffany back in February yeah. or in March, just a few months ago, you probably thought there was n there was absolutely no way that you can start your business from scratch and literally the clothes on your back and hit six figures in eight months. Oh, no, I would have probably slapped someone if they told me that I would <laughs> be living the life that I am living right now at the end of the year. And honestly, that's how I felt stuck in my circumstances when I was in a toxic, abusive relationship and I had a newborn and all I was thinking was like, why is this happening to me? Why would God put me through this rather than, okay, what do I want in a relationship? Who do I need to be in order to get there? And I realized that the person that I was being, the decisions I was making was keeping myself stuck in my current situation because I was looking at my limitations rather than what was possible for me. And once I started thinking about what was possible and what I could achieve in my life, that's when I really made the switch from victim mentality to oh, I get to do this. I get to be this person. And I think, like you mentioned, it's so easy to look at people that are successful or people on social media or people that we look up to and think that's so far away or think that's so insurmountable for us to achieve. But I also was listening to a podcast the other day about a woman that walked into this beautiful home and she was about to ask the homeowners, what do you do for a living? And instead she asked, who did you have to become in order to live the lifestyle that you live right now? And Ooh, oh my gosh, powerful. that hit me. It hit me because when I posted about 
reaching six figures in my business, people were DMing me and asking, what do you do? Um, the, especially after my reel went viral and I attract a lot of new people to my audience. So that's why they were asking, what do you do for your business? And I think if someone had asked me, who did you have to become? It would be a, it would be a much juicier journey of failure and getting back up and nights of crying, both tears of sacrifice and pain and failure, but also joy and a lot of things that happened behind the scenes rather than it's not the job, it's the mindset and the mentality. That's huge. Who do I have to be? Like who or who did you have to become? Not what what did you have to? Because when someone asked you, I honestly, I feel like that's the really common question that you get is like, well, what do you do? What kind of coach are you? But it's, it's not like, about the job. It's not about the job at all. Like you just have to decide. You have a decision every single day and you have to decide. I'm vegan. I ha I decide who, who do I want to be? Do I want to be the energized, good mood? Because I get all of this from plants, <laughs> from being vegan. So when I'm presented with a cheeseburger or whatever and I miss pizza a lot but I also love what like the energy that plants give me so when I'm presented with those options who do I want to I want to be do I want to be energized do I want to be healthy do I want it like I will easily choose you know because you know what serves you mm -hmm. and I think for a lot of people they're afraid of up leveling because of maybe what they've been taught when they were younger or what they believe about themselves as a person so I think starting with your mindset and starting with your mentality and what you've been taught and what you've been what's been said to you and staying tethered to those voices or to those claims can continue to hold you back. And Tender. you can, yes, I and love you can how you rewrite said. your story. You really can. And I also tell these, like, I have clients who start, I have a 12 week program, and I have clients who text me. Like, I had a client that texted me yesterday and was like, oh my gosh, I did this, this, and that. And it's only three weeks. And she was just so surprised. But I feel like if I, if I could go back, and tell myself, yo, it really does not, it doesn't take a whole decade or it doesn't take a whole lifetime to change your life. You can change it now. Like you said, deconstruct and separate yourself from the stories that you've been telling or or what people have been telling you. Separate and then ask yourself, who do you want to be and decide every single day or every single hour or whatever. I, sorry, I totally got... I totally got distracted. I want to slip in this Will Smith quote from the book um, from Angela Duckworth. All the things that you said were gems. So I'm glad that we that we uh, dove into that. This was the quote. I'm not afraid to die on a treadmill. I will not be outworked. You may be more talented than me. You might be smarter than me. And you may be better looking than me. But if we get on a treadmill together, you are going to get off first or I'm going to die. It's that simple. I'm not going to be outworked. So I really love that quote because like you said, you don't have to, the The idea that I had to deconstruct is that you don't have to be the most intelligent person to be successful or you don't have to be anything extraordinary to see like really big change. Does that make sense? Like, yeah, I read this quote a while ago that said the one thing that separates extraordinary people from the ordinary is that the extraordinary just get themselves up off the ground every mm -hmm. single time. time. Mm -hmm. I've seen that quote too. And it's, it's that simple. And I promise you, that's why we're saying we're reiterating the fact of like resilience and grit. You just have to get up. Maybe maybe if you make a mistake, maybe if you, you know, just don't, if you get knocked down in life, just don't stay down there or don't be, what is that quote? Be flexible in your ways to get to your goal, but don't change the goal. Yeah, there's so many different paths to your idea 
of success that might be wildly different than what you anticipated. And that's really what manifestation is, is knowing the end goal, but not knowing what might take you there specifically or when it will happen, but knowing that you continue on holding the faith because the universe truly works in the 11th hour. Can you explain what that means? Yeah. The 11th, the universe? So the universe works in the 11th hour. A lot of people hold the faith until the very last minute and then they give up. The universe sometimes happens one hour before the clock strikes midnight. And so holding the faith until the very, very end and not giving up is when your biggest goals and biggest aspirations come to life. A lot of people give up right before the miracle happens, but the universe sometimes works in that very last second. So you have to hold your faith until the very, very end. Okay, I've never known with that. Thanks for explaining that. There is this graphic that I've seen it's a man like in dirt and he's digging yeah yeah you know that it's like a miner and he's digging and there's a really really big diamond that he almost gets to but he gives up right before the his last like shovel right Mm -hmm. and so that's that's such a great point because like i said i used to give up all the time any project and this was just last year guys this is november I started my blog last March, so it was like a year and a half ago, and then I started my blog in March, and I won Woman of the Year in September. So when when we, and then like with Tiffany, she started April, and she hit six figures in like November. So I just want to reiterate the fact that it is so possible, we just have to, oh, speaking of tools, so what are... What are some tangible tools that you would give someone who wants to finally stop playing victim, who wants to take their life in their hands and wants to take responsibility? What are some like tangible? Because they love tangible tips. Like, of course, motivational quotes are great and they sound nice, but I like tools. Tools are my favorite. So what would you say to someone? Same. I also love tangible step-by-step things that you are able to do in order to apply it to your own life. So I have three. The first thing that you should do is become aware of your thoughts. What are you thinking? What are you consuming? What are your actions? What are you doing right now that might not be aligned with where you want to be? Do you want to continue that behavior or do you want to reframe it and deconstruct it? Which is my second point is deconstructing. So what thoughts, what behaviors, what which people are no longer serving who you want to be. So once you decide who you need to be or where you want to get to, you then decide who you need to be in order to get there. And then the third is inspired action. What kind of action would you take as the version of your highest self? So if me, Tiffany, eight months ago, wanted to hit six figures in her business within the first year, what did she need to do? I've invested, now I feel like it's closer to 20K in courses and coaches and education that would help me up level and give me the right tools, momentum, resources, and accountability in order to get closer to my goals. If I had not done that, I would not have been able to hit six figures or it would have just taken me a lot longer. So because I was able to step into who I was meant to be after deciding what goals I wanted to reach and then deciding what actions to take, my actions were a result of the version of me that was already living my dream life. And that's really the goal is living as if and taking 100% responsibility the entire way through. Living as if that's really big. And I feel like that doesn't even just apply to entrepreneurs that just that applies to anything. Like, for example, um, like with trust issues, uh, when I would have like an intrusive thought or a thought that didn't serve me. So I decided that I wanted I made you guys, you have to make the decision of who you want to be. So for me, obviously, there's more digging and there's more you know, um, that I can get into with my trust issues. But a really big 
thing for me was I wanted to be a girl, a, a girlfriend who trusted my boyfriend because he deserved it, right? So when I would have intrusive thoughts, um, one of the tools was like, okay, who do I want to be? I want to be a confident, secure girlfriend who, you know, with a peace of mind. So sometimes all it takes is deciding who you want to be. And then, like you said, action steps, like what can I do? And they can be very little action steps. Like, for example, if you want to be a person who's fit, like a person who um, actively works out, you don't have to wake up at 5 a.m. and work out for two hours, like every single day. It can start off with, okay, let me walk to the store down the street and walk back. Like anytime I need to go to the store, I can walk. It can just be baby steps that serve, like she said, your highest self. And so that's like a really, I love that you bring that up. How did you let go of self-pity? And like, how, how would you say like if a person wants to prevent throwing a pity party for themselves? Because I, I threw pity parties all the time. I was like the best host, like come one, <laughs> come one, come all. I had hats. I had like a DJ set up, everything. Like I was just the queen of pity parties. So how would yeah. you, or what would you tell someone to kind of prevent that from happening? Yeah, the first thing I would say is all of your emotions are valid. There's no such thing as bad or negative emotions. Let yourself feel all the spectrum of emotions, especially if you're feeling disappointed or disheartened or upset. Allow yourself to feel those things, but then also Make sure to get back up off the ground afterwards. Decide that you are not going to let that take over and consume you as a person and prevent you from doing what you want to do. What can also help is recognizing that every single thing in your life, not everything that goes wrong is a failure. You can deconstruct that and reframe it as something that allows you to learn something different about yourself, being able to recognize that your setback or that your failure or that your mistakes do not define who you are, but instead calls you to a higher place that you didn't get what you wanted for a big reason. Um, and this allows you to identify where you need to pivot, where you need to readjust and Going back to really recognizing your mirrors, a lot of behavior ends up just mirroring what you need to learn and what you need to work on. So that's what I would tell people. I think it's easy to fall into the woe is me and then use that as an excuse to not go forward and, and to chase your dreams. So give yourself that permission to cry it out and to feel all of your emotions, but then also pick yourself back up off the bathroom floor um, or off of your bed and decide who do you need to be in order to get closer to your goal? And let that be a fire that you light underneath you in order to go forth 10 times harder. Yeah, I, I just want to piggyback off that off two things. So like failure, you guys, we don't for in my in my perspective, you don't ever fail. You learn. The, the only way that for me, if, the only way that you fail is that if you stop trying. If you give up. If you, if you give quit. up, that's failing. Mm -hmm. But if you if you make a mistake, that's not failing because you learn. It's part of the yeah. journey. Imagine if every single thing went right in our lives. We wouldn't be sitting here being able to share these stories <laughs> with you all and being able to evolve. And I also appreciate the good times if we didn't go through every single bit of hardship. Yeah, and I just want to just like chime in that uh because i didn't really share much of my story but like just with the whole trust issues thing you guys i'm an adult survivor of child um, like really severe childhood abuse and i got ptsd from it depression anxiety and um pisd which is post-infidelity stress disorder um just from being cheated on and yes, there's such thing. You guys should Google it because um, I wrote a blog post about it. Um, you can go to my blog too. But I've just been through a lot and I could have stayed down. I had everything. There's just so many things that happened to me and I could have stayed down. 
but I decided to, it got to the point where I was like, this is not the life that I want to live. Like I know I was made for more because I was at rock bottom. So for anybody who's listening to this, who's just completely at rock bottom, and what's that quote where it was like, if you're in hell, why would you stop here? Right? Keep like keep going because keep going. why would you want to stop? That was like huge for me when I read that. I was like, oh yeah, because I just, like I said, I set up, I set up shop and I was just like made, you know, I just was like, okay, this is where I'm going to end up. Do you have any words of encouragement for my listeners? Like, what would you say to someone who doesn't believe that they're mentally tough? Because that's another thing that I was just like, those people are just so strong mentally. I just never thought that I could be this strong, have a, have a high emotional IQ or just be really gritty and be really resilient. What would you say to someone who's, who's listening right now yeah. who believes that? I think that for a lot of us, we've heard one thing from our parents told to us maybe over and over or something that a classmate said in fourth grade or something that a teacher or an ex-boyfriend or an ex-best friend or something told us and we choose to hold on to it and allow it to be our identity. So I would say if you're having intrusive thoughts, or you're having thoughts that don't serve you, sit for a moment and just ask yourself where these come from. A lot of our sub conscious thoughts come from things that our parents have told us over the years. And so they might not necessarily be facts. A lot of them aren't. So really deciding to not hold on to that and take that around with you anymore, releasing that boulder and recognizing that everything that you want is just waiting on the other side of fear and that you are stronger than you know. Sometimes it really just takes a leap forward in faith and expecting the net to appear beneath you because when you decide to go forward and create this passion into a purpose or stepping into your calling as a woman, the universe 100% has your back and you are allowed to follow that fear. If you're fearful, if you're feeling hesitant, good, follow and embrace that and let it guide you because no growth happens in the comfort zone. And also ask yourself, do you want to stay exactly where you're at in five years or in 10 years? Or if you woke up in 20 years and you were living the same life over and over and over, would you be happy? Or don't you think that you deserve something so much greater? For me, it was the fear of staying where I was at and mm-hmm. not up-leveling it that pushed me out of my comfort zone, even though I did scary things and I did a lot of things I never thought I would do in order to get closer to my goals, as well as the sacrifices that I made and the woman that I had to become. But it was all worth it because life supports which supports life. So if you have... Wait, repeat that again? Life supports what supports life. So if you're doing something out of purpose and passion for yourself, the universe has your back. Life will always support what supports life. So if you are providing for your child as a single mom, if you have plans to be a philanthropist and to serve marginalized communities, if you have a plan to serve people in your community and your audience and build something for yourself that will change the lives of others you will be surprised how everything falls into place because when you come from that place of service, when you come from that place of passion and you do what you're truly meant to, you are at that point unstoppable. You know what I want to say? That is 100% true, you guys, because like, mind you, I have anxiety. So obviously I'll have, I have these thoughts like fear, I have fear all the time. Fear, it's not being afraid of fear and just being friends with it because your fear, there's there's a little truth to your fear. It often gives us messages and also too, like you said, your subconscious holds you back into your comfort zone. So it's just pushing past that. Trusting the universe, whatever you believe in, it the universe has your back. For example, I just quit my nine to five. What was it like three weeks ago? And literally after, maybe it was like a few, actually it was the following week, I had, so sorry, side note. So 
I quit my nine to five so I can pursue life coaching full time. Literally, when I quit the next week, I onboarded the most clients I had ever had since launching, like literally a week after. And it was obviously terrifying to leave your nine to five because I support my family as well. Like I pay some of their bills and I have my own bills. I live in the Bay Area. So like you have to give your eyeball for rent. Like (laughs) um, it's so expensive out here, but I trusted that everything will work in my favor and the universe provided. And exactly, it's just having that trust that everything is working for you. Like life is happening for you and not to you. And that was a key thing uh, for me to break out of the victim mentality. So I just wanted to wrap this up and say thank you so much, Tiffany, for just like taking the time to share your knowledge. I just really, we both have now just after doing the interview, sometimes I forget how it was a nice reminder how far I've come in so little time, especially with you and your business just being laid off and then just like rising from the ashes and like what is that the phoenix that like rises from the ashes and I that's why I wanted her on my first you're my first guest I wanted her to be the first guest because the odds are stacked against her you guys she's like a single mom she um you have childhood trauma as well you've had you got laid off. You I was had low all- income. I was mm-hmm. making like $20 an hour, only working about 20 hours a week, going to school, barely making rent, having to reach out to my parents because I couldn't make rent in the Bay Area. Just everything. Everything was – like I was the person that didn't know if I could shift my mindset. I didn't know if it was possible for me. But if I could come out of it being my own boss – moving now into a bigger place, being a six-figure entrepreneur, creating the lifestyle of my dreams, and still continuing with school, I'm going to graduate in a year, then you can 100% do it as well. Yeah. And I came from, I came, like, we were poor growing up. Like, we didn't, like, our toilet was, like, outdoors, like, poor. Like, I came from straight... Like I had a tin roof, we had buckets everywhere, like when it rained. And so from being my own boss, like in California, in in the US in general. So I just wanted to, I just wanted to bring her on because like anything is possible. We like, we went over all the tools and everything. So we just wanted to share it with you guys, just in case you think it, it's not possible. It 100% is and it's very attainable. We, She just, like I said, she just started her business in April, which was a few months ago. And so anyways, thank you. Thank you for being, <laughs> thank you for being on the show. Okay. So how can my listeners find you? Because I'm sure after this episode, everyone's, everyone's going to run to your page. Um, how can they find you? <laughs> yeah. So on Instagram, I am at tiffanychung.co. That's Chung spelled C-H-E-U-N-G. I am a social media business coach. I help coaches and aspiring coaches create a content strategy that works for them, as well as creating a signature offer. So a signature program in eight weeks or less and turn their followers into clients. My website is the same as well. It's tiffanychung.co. If you have any questions about what Asia and I talked about today on on the podcast, or if you want to hear more details about my own journey, my DMs are always open and I do answer every single one of them. So really, really happy to connect with you all on there. Yeah, I'm going to link all of her um, socials and her website on there. And I will say that the reason why I'm able to be a coach full time is I went through her program. That's actually how I know her. She was my coach for social media And I just like, obviously, like I would not endorse her if she did not know what she was doing. Like she she's like, you're a pro. And the the reason why and I just wanted to plug it in here is because my dream life is to to help women full time and that be my own boss. And it wouldn't have been possible 
without you. So I just like a credit, credit where credit's due. Thank you. 100%. So I'm going to link everything. And so um, thank you again, Tiffany. And I'm sure I'll have you on for another episode because she's just so inspiring. Thank you. Thank you. Lastly, for anyone who's listening, I really just want to reiterate the fact that you truly have the power to rewrite your story. Use my story as a true testimony of how we can really turn our life around and create our lives on our own terms. I came from a small, tiny 10 mile by 13 mile island to America and I was broke. I was using public transportation. I either gave up on a goal I started or I didn't even dare to like set goals. And now I have my own podcast and my own business. And you guys, I had really extreme low self-esteem and absolutely no confidence. And that was um, a lot from my childhood trauma. And so I went from low self-esteem to no confidence to quitting my nine to five to work my business that I started on my own. And I just started this business three months ago and I put my two weeks in a few weeks ago. And so now I'm doing that full time. We do not have control over the cards we were dealt with but we have control over how we play them, sis. Only you have the power to change your life. No one can do it for you. And you are absolutely, without a doubt, capable. The first part is believing you can. And I'm telling you, you absolutely can, sis. It's glow up season, honey. We are coming for everything we ever wanted in life. I don't know if you can hear my clapping. We are, (laughs) sorry, if you follow me on social media, you know that the clap is just like a, I'm trying to emphasize of how passionate that statement is. So it's glow up season, honey. We are coming for everything we ever wanted in life, sis. Let's go get it. I'm Asia and I firmly believe that it doesn't matter what's been written in our story so far. It's how we fill up the rest of the pages that count. Step into your power, sis. I believe in you. Thank you so much for tuning in and letting me into your world today. I'm so excited to bring you more episodes so we can get you growing and glowing. If you loved this episode, share it with friends. Take a screenshot and throw it on your story and tag me at asia.hilario, H-I-L-A-R-I-O, on Instagram, and I'll show you some love. Follow me for weekly inspo, updates, and empowering content. You can also visit the website at theglowupseasonpodcast.com. Thank you guys so much, and I'll catch you on the next episode. It's that glow up. This that season, I'm gonna have to show ya. Make over my life so I can know you. Won't you get to know me? Your life is a trophy. Woman 